All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got my man, Charlie Kirk, back in the building, taking on what looks to be another one of these way out there loony leftist teachers. So I'll try to save my thoughts to the end. I'm sure it's going to be a doozy. Let's get it popping. All right. So I just wanted to know what your take was on, you said, with education to fire the bad teachers. What's your definition of bad teachers? Great question. So how many people here think you've had at least one teacher that deserves to be fired? Everyone raised their hand always. Always. Um, so the question is, how do you find them, right? So I got this question asked a lot. Here's the interesting thing. So when President Obama was running for president in 2008, one of his big things, he said it over 40 times, was that we need to have a system that rewards good teachers and fires bad ones. But the question is always, how do you find the bad ones? So is it test scores? Probably not. Is it you know, peer evaluation? The best metric is you have teachers grade teachers and you have parental input. Here's the thing. You know the really, really bad teachers. The, those have got to go. I had teachers earning $150,000 a year, barely showing up for class, teaching gym, doing nothing, being completely lazy. They're a drain on the school budget. They're a drain on the local community and they should be fired instantaneously. The problem is, under current teacher tenure laws in certain states, in most states, they are protected by, by contracts designed by teacher unions that make it nearly impossible to fire bad teachers. If they're not productive, they don't put time in. So I, I would support reform and a system that allows really good teachers. Here's the thing. Some teachers, this might be a surprise to some of my liberal counterparts, so I had te public, te public school teachers that changed my life that did unbelievable amount of work. They got in at 6, 6 a.m. every day. They worked their tail off. Then I had teachers that would take half the year off. They just didn't care. They were, they were you know, bratty. They thought it was horrible. And yet those, the, the one that didn't put in as much effort was earning more than the person that was just there. That is not the way that we should reward I think, I believe, teachers in, in this country. Teachers are modern day heroes. I'm very, very pro-teacher, very anti-teacher union. So I think that's the big distinction. So. What about professors? Yeah. Professors? Yeah, like that's, college, at the college well, that's a, I, I believe this similar thing. I think that we currently have a system that rewards professors that want to write their book and sell it back to their class. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's well, it's, it's accurate, accurate. These college professors, many of them, aren't focused on teaching anymore. It's all about their political agenda and they want to express it to you and talk about sexuality and, and deviate from what curriculum education is supposed to be about. They make it about themselves and, and trying to lure these kids into this deceitful, wicked world. And that's not okay. And I'll, I'll talk more about that at the end. I hope Charlie dishes it to her straight. Just be a little bit more blunt, Charlie. I know you, I know you got it in you. You always come correct. Fair point. Um, it's, it's also rewards professors Hustlers. that do most studying um, and not actually engaging with their current class. Here's the problem is that most college freshmen are taught by TAs, teacher's assistants. So they're, they're getting something, they're paying for something they're not even getting. Um, it's, it, I think measuring value in a professor should be different than that of a teacher, but here's the big difference is that, that public school teachers in K through 12 education um, have to be held to a different standard than professors. It just has to be. It's a different, there's more K through 12 teachers than there are professors, a lot more, almost 10 to one ratio. Agree. Okay, but with the whole point on the TAs, they're usually doctoral students. Yes. That are turning into professors. So. But they ain't there yet. Why is that a problem? How are, how are the TAs supposed to Because when you start to have class sizes that are 500 people and plus, when you have TAs that are not yet masters on the subject that you're paying a pretty penny on, that deserves question. Because you are going to college to learn from subject matter experts in an environment where you can dive deep into that particular topic, so on and so forth. So if I'm paying or I'm being forced to pay $800 for this sociology class or you know, human studies class or North, you know, and I'm getting taught by a TA with 800 people in a lecture hall this big, that, that could, that there's something I think wrong with that. I think because you're, you're paying a pretty uh. penny for something that is then you know, very, I would say, <laughs> inadequate. Now, that wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I thought we were going to get a debate. I thought things were going to be fired up and a little bit more umph from Charlie's perspective. But 
we're deep into it now, so I'm going to talk about it. And I have to address first the fact that you can tell exactly who this woman votes for from a mile away. I mean, you know what I mean. You've seen these people out in the real world, and they aren't playing hide-and-go-seek. It's all up in your face. Did you notice how the, the, the fear in her eyes just lit up at the idea of simply being held accountable for her ability to teach or any TA out there? Mommy and Daddy are forking out money year after year for tuition for you to learn from their child to learn from an apprentice. They want somebody who's paid their dues, who's tried and true, who is the expert in that field. How dare we question someone of your impeccable stature, ma'am? How dare we we question that you're a TA or you're not quite at the level of professor or just haven't put in the years yet? That's okay. Work to get there. Get there and then we can talk about it. And then you can lead these lecture halls of 500 plus students. But I don't even know what you're teaching exactly. Like when I see this woman, I, I, I can't, you know, diagnose what exactly is the subject that she's teaching. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Is, is it how to win a pie eating competition? And if I don't participate, let me guess. I'm going to be labeled as racist for, for not stuffing my face too. That's how things t seem to go these days. And I mean, land sakes, y'all. Sometimes I just can't with these people. I have to call things how they are. And I just want to forewarn you that I'm about to go on a little tangent because there's certain things that Charlie didn't touch on that I want to touch on. And it, it comes down to the educational realm that we see in society today from K through 12 and beyond that into the college ranks. There's a whole bunch of teachers shoving ideology down students' throats on both sides and it, it should be banned. There shouldn't be liberal or conservative in the school place. It's become far too political in these halls and it ain't the place for it. Teachers are employed to teach. That means math, reading, real history, English, things of that nature. You're not there to indoctrinate and try to persuade kids into viewing the world through your cattywampus lens. That's that's not what you're there for. That's not what people pay you, parents, you know, enlist their kids into those schools and enroll them into those schools. Enlist is more of like a military term. They didn't enlist. They enrolled their child, trust entrusted you with their child's education, their, you know, just mental well-being, their moral compass, all of that. They entrust that to you for six to eight hours hours a day, you shouldn't be talking about all this, this wonky talk stuff. I mean, for real, no one should be expressing their political views or sexuality inside an educational facility. If they do, in the great words of President Donald Trump back in his apprentice days, you're fired. You're fired. There's absolutely no excuse and reason that our kids, these students, should not be at a safe place in a school. They, they're supposed to be in those classrooms to be protected from abuse, not to endure abuse and all this, this mental violation and all this mutilation and affirmations and all this garbage that we see flooding society today. Stick to the curriculum or adios. Like, it should be instant relief of these people's responsibilities. TA, professor, principal, uh, social worker, whatever label that you want to give these people, you're there to teach. You're employed and on the payroll to educate. Stick to it. And I'm so relieved and happy that K through 12 and a few semesters in college, those are a distant memory for me because I couldn't imagine having to endure this on a day-to-day -day basis. Teachers thinking that they know best and that they're talking about absurd things that just do not fit in that setting, not whatsoever. And back then, my teachers, for the most part, at least encouraged me to think for myself and all my fellow students. And other than being way off in the science and biology classes, it wasn't a complete cluster dump. And, and us millennials, we still had hope in becoming respectful and well-rounded adults. I know they were off in the, the BCE and the textbooks. They, they said it was before Common Era, when in reality, it's before Christ. The year of our Lord is 2023. That dates back to Jesus, the Messiah, my Lord and Savior. They got that wrong. They talked about evolution and things of that, of course, that we evolved from cosmic soup, this random Big Bang that means nothing. Our life has no purpose, that we evolved from salt water and fish in the sea. I got this luscious beard from some animal. It, it, that don't make no sense, but... But other than that, for the most part, they led us down a path that actually made sense instead of what we see today. And hats off to Charlie and God bless that man for just his tremendous patience in being able to deal with these people on a daily basis. I don't know if I could do it with, without my head exploding and really losing my cool and, and feeling like I was losing my Christian composure. I know I can't lose my salvation. But I might lose my composure at times and not be a shining example of, of righteousness. With, with dealing with these people, you got to have a whole nother level of skill of just being able to stay cool, calm, and collected. And Charlie has that. And 
And on top of that, I have a soft spot for these kids because they're innocent, they're fragile, they 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 take in pretty much everything and everything they consume, they they usually act upon it because they don't know what they don't know. Just let them be kids and, and try, stop trying to sculpt and affirm them into this spectrum of lies. Let them be the little boy or little girl that they were born as because you can't change that, you can't manipulate that, you can manipulate it, you can try, but... If you lead them down a path of destruction like I see time and time again with these institutions, it's not going to be good for you. So we got to pray for these these teachers to wake up, re really come into the reality of what life actually is and, and, you know, turn and face Jesus Christ, reach repentance, put all their faith and trust in God instead of leaning on their own ideologues and, and all this nonsense that they lean into. But again, I could go off into a very long rant, which I've already done. I'm passionate about this, but... I would love to know what y'all think down below in the comment section. I don't have any scripture and biblical soul food for you today. Just, just keep these kids in your heart and your prayers. And when you can make a, a difference, when you can stand up to stop this madness, do so. I'm going to continue to use my God-given platform to, to call this out when I see it and to elaborate even more when I see people uh, don't dive into it as, as in-depth as they should. But what do y'all think? Let me know down in the comments section. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to like this video by smashing the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you're not already ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime i post a video just in case youtube forgets to let you know i appreciate you i love y'all for doing so if you want to take it a step further you like what we're doing over here you want to show a little extra love and support by no means do you have to but you can get awesome designs like this confidence knowing i can't but he can these designs are made over my wife's Etsy store by her, customized in-house, all of that, insulated tumblers, petite, teat, small sizes to big, big and hefty for the 5X folks out there, all different sizes and colors. Like I said, we don't discriminate. We appreciate y'all. It goes a very long way in allowing me to continue to do what I do. All my other links are down below in the description section. Shout out to the Patreon, buy me a coffee fam. Anybody who's ever joined the Gibson family on YouTube by hitting that little join button and becoming a member, I'm so grateful for y'all. I can't thank you enough and put into words and context just how appreciative I am for you guys showing up every single video and allowing my freckle face to rant at you. I just love y'all so much and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. I'll be praying for you. Until next time, Godspeed, I'm gone.